Pike fly fishing is really fun. In this video I'm going to show you how to tie an articulated pike fly that I have had quite a few pikes last year and I've actually caught my biggest pi fly pike ever with this pattern so stick around and I'm going to show you how to tie this thing. For this pike fly I'm going to be using Partridge Universal Predator 6 Aut Hook and uh, I also have this shank here which I'm going to be tying all of the material on. Like with most flies, I'm going to start by adding a base of thread and shank. And I'm using a 3 odd uni thread, which is pretty nice thread for pike flies. You know, it's quite durable. And that's definitely something that you want to have on pike flies. And let's just clip that off. Then we're gonna add some bucktail uh, in color gray because I'm doing a bait fish pattern. This is usually a really good color for that. I'm gonna take a decent bundle of, of um, bucktail here and we're gonna tie this in a hollow style so the ends of the bucktail are gonna be facing forwards. I'm gonna try to distribute this thing all around the shank evenly. I'm gonna tweak it a little bit so that it's, it's definitely distributed evenly. So then I'm gonna clip the ends off here. Then I'm gonna add a dab of super glue on the thread itself. I actually learned this trick from a Finnish pike angler, uh, Johan Lindquist. Thanks Johan, this is a great tip. And then we're gonna force the bucktail backwards like this. And I'm gonna start building thread on the front of the uh, bucktail here. So you don't actually want to tie uh, on top of the bucktail so that you get this cool uh, corona effect. Speaking of bucktails, you sometimes get really bad patches of, uh, of bucktail when you especially order, order them online. And especially on this one, you can see the hairs are quite stiff. And um, you can try to remedy that with uh, giving them a bath. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do with this bucktail. And I'm gonna run some hot water and then I'm gonna add some dishwashing detergent in hot water. And I've also heard that some hair products will work here as well, which makes sense because this is hair. I just submerge the bucktail and start moving the hairs. And try to get as much of the dye off from the bucktail as I can. And as you can see, the water is starting to turn blue. And I'm going to then just, you know, rinse this uh, dishwashing detergent off with some cold water. And then of course it's just a matter of leaving it to dry until we can use it again. Now that the bucktail has dried, I can definitely feel it in my fingers when I run them through the 
uh, hairs here that it's not as stiff anymore. So it should work nicely now. I'm gonna add some big fly fiber on my pike fly. And this is in the bleeding roach color. And I've already pre-cut uh, the right pieces on my pike fly. And I, of course, I try to have the material spread out evenly. And I think I do this a little bit differently than most uh, pike fly uh, anglers, where I fold uh, the material like this. And I'm convinced that this actually makes the fly much more secure and also gives it much more bulk with less material, which is definitely always good for for pike fly fishing, because, uh, well, they tend to be la rather large. Then I'm gonna add some super glue. And also, since this is not going to be a 30 centimeter pike fly, I'm going to snip a little bit off from the from the tail. This should make it uh, somewhere around 20 centimeters. I'm going to add some flash to my fly now. This is a magnum flashable, 52 centimeters long. And I'm going to take maybe 15 strands. And then I'm going to just fold this in half and cut it. Then I'm gonna, gonna take two few of these strands and I'm gonna pull them out. This gives the fly a little bit more of a tapered look. Then it's just a matter of uh, securing the flash on the shank. This is sometimes a little bit tricky, especially when you try to distribute this thing evenly around the big fly fiber. Then I'm going to add some mirror opal magnum flash blue. Also one of my favorite colors. This time I think I'm gonna have maybe 10 strands. And like with the other one, I'm just gonna fold this thing in half and then just cut it. And take a few of these strands and pull it so that the fly is not gonna get clumped. And then just try to have all of the flash material around the big fly fiber again. And there we have it. Just gonna secure this and then of course add super glue. I'm gonna add a little bit more flash and I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. Now this is actually teal blue. I think I'm gonna take five strands roughly and like always just gonna cut it and then just fold it in half and cut it again. Then 
just pull a few of these apart from the from the uh, bunch. And then just folding it and then just securing the flash in the place. And this time around I'm gonna try to distribute it evenly and making this as the back color as this is sort of like supposed to be a bait fish pattern. I'm gonna add some Kyog 1 grade uh, saddle feathers on my pike fly to make it a little bit more pimped out. Uh, these are definitely not necessary but they do give a really cool look to your pike fly. Then I'm gonna take a few of these cool um, lateral scales and I'm gonna add these on the side of my bait fish fly to imitate some sort of like a bleeding effect. That's, a, that's what I guess these are for, mostly. And I'm not trying to uh, put this on like 50-50, maybe more like 40-60. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side as well. Again, a little bit of super glue. I'm gonna start making the head for my for my pike fly, and I usually always have a little bit of craft fur to give the head a little bit more bulk. And uh, when you're using craft fur, uh, I think this fluffy part on the bottom is definitely not necessary. It gives it soaks in a lot of water, so that makes your flies much more heavier, therefore harder to cast. So it just get rid of that. Now I'm gonna add a few pieces of craft fur to give the head a little bit more bulk. And as always, I try to make sure that I have an even coverage, so I'm gonna add another piece on the bottom here as well so that my shank is completely covered from from all the sides and I'm just gonna turn this uh, material back sometimes this is a little bit tricky because it's quite frizzy sometimes And then I'm just gonna tie in front of the craft fur. And then I'm just gonna add one more piece. And of course try to make sure that it's uh, distributed evenly around the shank. And then just pull this thing back. And since this is so frizzy, again, I'm gonna comb this a little bit. And the last material I'm gonna be using is gonna be a winged flash. And I'm gonna 
let's take a fairly uh, big uh, clump of uh, wing and flesh. I'm gonna be folding it in half and cutting it. Then I'm gonna be pulling it apart. Then I try to make sure that I get an even uh, distribution on the sides, especially. I'll just fold it back and you know, um, secure it in place. Then I'm gonna add a couple of more colors. Of course, a bait fish pattern is not gonna be complete if it doesn't have a bloody throat. So this is also wing and flash, by the way. I'm gonna add some teal blue. Hold that back. And secure it with red. And then finally I'm gonna add some midnight blue. And like before, just fold it back. Home job and we're basically done done without tying now no pike fly is completed without ice so next I'm gonna be adding some homemade ice to my pike fly and this usually makes your flies really pop and of course, uh, I'm convinced that these eyes actually give a homing uh, spot for the pike to strike. So it's usually, I think, it's a good idea to add at least some sort of eyes on your pike fly. And there we have it. Looks pretty neat. For this fly I'm gonna be doing a epoxy head. So I'm just gonna mix some 10 minute epoxy and make the head. I'm gonna start adding the epoxy on my uh, pike flies head. I usually always start from the front and then just slowly work myself to the back of the eyes. And this is sometimes a little bit tricky, especially with uh, fine fibers like uh, wing and flesh. But it's completely doable if you do it slowly. And 
do the same to the uh, underside of the, of the fly. And like I said before, we definitely don't want to rush this. We have 10 minutes and you definitely don't have to rush if you have that much time. So the fly is done now and unfortunately something happened with uh, with my camera while I was transferring the files to my computer and the last clip got deleted so can't show you uh, how to finish off the epoxy head uh, but it's not that difficult to do at, at all basically just repeat what I did previously and then just you know remember to uh, keep the vise rotating uh, until the epoxy has cured enough that it doesn't flow anymore so we get this uh, nice looking epoxy head that I have here and it looks pretty nice should be I mean not should be it, it is ready for for pike fishing now and uh, yeah hope you guys enjoyed this little Thai fiasco of mine and be sure to subscribe like and comment and all that stuff and I'll see you guys on the next one